There's a rule of thumb that says you should spend more on your optic than you did on your rifle. Well, I recently purchased a Ruger Precision Rimfire, which has a street price of about five, six hundred bucks. So it wasn't easy, but I spent a bit more than that to get a Leupold Mark III HD 824 by 50 millimeter scope that I'm going to review today. We're going to take a quick look at what you get in the box and then test it out at the range on this episode of Moondog Industries. This is the Leupold Mark III HD. It has an 8-24 by 50 millimeter second focal plane scope. And let's take a look at what you get. Let's see what you get in the box. You get the scope. Remarkably light uh, compared to the other scopes I own that are the Athlon and the Vortex. This one feels first impression is it's remarkably light. You get in the box you get an Allen key, you have an instruction manual, and you get a sticker. And that's it. Wonderfully beautiful construction here. Let's see. Fast focus, a little stiff, smooth, but I can hear a little bit of rubbing, but it does turn smoothly. Then we have our, oh, this is nice. Very smooth and not too stiff. Of course, it helps that it also has a removable throw, little stubby throw lever there, but it goes from 8 to 24. We have our elevation and a covered windage. Each click is not as sharp as uh, either the Vortex or the Athlon but definite, and as you can hear, fairly quiet. Elevation knobs, definitely much more positive and very audible in comparison. And our parallax adjustment, also very smooth. All right, so let's take it out to the range and test it out. I've set up some reference targets at the Law Enforcement Training Center range and we're going to head back to 100 yards and take a look at them through the scope. Now I have to explain a few things here to uninformed viewers like those who happen to work at YouTube. A YouTube staffer rejected the first edit of this video. Uh, their reasoning was that either I was showing gun modification, modifying a firearm, or that I was selling or promoting a firearm sales or the sale of a product. I'm not doing that. I'm not selling anything you're seeing here. There's no bump stock here, thermal or infrared sights or incendiary ammo. This is a factory stock off the shelf purchased from a sporting goods store Ruger Precision Rimfire Rifle. The fact that I have to explain this and it's not immediately obvious just speaks to the sorry state of firearms education in this country. So as a gun enthusiast, let me suggest a few things. One, take a non-shooter to the range and educate them. Let them have fun. Two, simply hit the like and subscribe buttons and leave a comment. Now, big tech may or may not be biased against 2A content. I mean, I have my own opinions, but it is influenced by trends. It amplifies trends. So how you react to this video makes a difference. And finally, you could watch these videos on Rumble, which doesn't censor 2A content. Okay, now back to reviewing the scope. As I was setting up the scope cam, I came across an unusual problem. So this is one of those strangest things I've had to deal with is the loophole has a crazy amount of eye relief, about uh, almost six inches and at low power. So the setup that I have actually is not conducive to having something in such a long eye relief. I've really had to push back on my mount much farther than I have with any other rifle uh, scope. So um, kudos, uh, Good, great thing if you're firing high power uh, rifles because uh, you won't ever have to worry about uh, uh, scope bite with this really long eye relief. But uh, for filming this, it's a bit of a challenge. As you can see here, the, the image is quite small because it uh, is the, the camera is so much further back. All right, I've got the scope cam squared away and I'm giving it two times digital zoom just so it doesn't look so tiny on your screen. 
I'm going to be conducting some very basic scope performance tests, and for the most part, this is going to be perfunctory, because this is, after all, loopholed, which is essentially the gold standard from which all other scopes are measured. The expectation is it's going to pass all these tests. It'll be surprising if it doesn't. We're going to start with a zoom or point of aim test and see if the reticles shift in any way as you change or adjust the power, the magnification setting. Zoom out. Zoom in. And it passed. But, um, you know, you'd be surprised. There are some budget scopes out there that won't even pass this test. And, you know, that's a deal breaker. All right, let's take a look at the maximum range of adjustments. Head down. And that's as far down as it'll go. And that is as far up as it will go. To zero. Let's see our windage. That's far right. That's as far as left as it will go. Next up, Cyclops Joe's famous test called... All right, we're going to do a nipple twister test. Uh, we've got uh, the edge of the target here is our start and stop reference points. And we're just going to just randomly twist our turrets and see if it returns back to zero. This has the zero stop engaged, so I really can't move it past that for this test. Uh, the reason I did that is because of the way that the... Uh, turret is designed with the zero stop it is much more precise and locked in when the zero when the turret is down on the zero stop when it's not it can be a little loose and head way off be imprecise as to where when it returns back to zero so anyway let us see we're at. I'm bring this back to zero on the, uh, the windage and the elevation. We're, we're okay. We are back to zero, zero, right on. All right, so pass the nipple twister test. The elevation turret has a simple and effective zero stop. A small pin engages a tooth at the base of the turret, preventing it from turning past your set zero point. You activate or deactivate the zero stop using the set screw on the turret. Finally, let's take a detailed look at the optical image quality of this glass. I think I need to zoom in just a little bit more. Let's bring it up to 200 percent. And very bright. I'm getting some chromatic aberration along the top of the edge of the. Uh, of the image there, a little bit of a purple fringe. Not so much in the center, which is always good. Uh, and it is a very high contrast image there. Okay, I'm gonna take a still. This is a still image from the video so that we don't have to deal with heat shimmer distorting any of the fine details. We can clearly see the bullet holes on the three inch reactive sticker target on our left. But more importantly, we can clearly make out two bullet holes, one directly below the sticker bullseye and one at the lower edge of the target. Now, looking at the U.S. Air Force's optical resolution chart on the right, we can easily make out both horizontal and vertical lines down to element 5 and group negative 1 in this image. But in all honesty, this image doesn't do the real scope justice. Through my naked eye, I could see details into group 0, which is just remarkable. This is only limited by the fact that the eye relief is so far back that the image got really small and so um, the, the photo, the uh, video, just couldn't resolve all the detail that you can actually see through the scope. So these are my thoughts and insights having bought and tested this scope. It has some amazing glass quality, but you know, that's to be expected since it's a loophole. It has a very generous eye relief, though the same can't be said for the eye box. At 24 power, it's a tad unforgiving. 
Now looking through the scope, we see the P5TMR reticle. If you prefer a nice, thick, prominent reticle that will stand out from even the most cluttered background or heavy foliage, this is a reticle for you. But a nice, thick reticle is counterproductive if you're using it primarily for long-range precision because those thick wire reticles will cover up small targets as well as center X's. For example, I can't see the three-quarter inch black dot that I put in the center of this target because it's obscured by the reticle. Yet despite that, I have to admit that this scope is a pleasure to shoot. Its sharpness and brightness make everything you're looking at just pop. Yeah, like that, but you know, visually. Now, this performance is going to cost you about $700, give or take, and that makes this a budget loophole compared to the Mark V, which I also reviewed. Is it worth it? Well, that's up to you. If you want to see other reviews and learn more, check out my blog, MoondogIndustries.com. And don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Thanks for watching. Moondog, out. Hey. If you enjoyed this video, please share it on forums, Facebook, Reddit, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, MeWe, whatever social media you're on. And if you want to see all of my videos, check out MoondogIndustries.com.